Hello class, it's Professor Hatter here. Today we're going to go into part three of my history of hats, of my personal collection. Now these hats are hats number 16 through 21. And there's a little asterisk with this, um, this little set. There's a little hiccup in this little series here. And I'll get to number 18 and I'll explain that uh, asterisk. But... Of course, I'd like to welcome you to part three. If you're new here, please check out part one and two. But I mean, I mean, there's no like beginning part where it's like, oh, you have to catch up from one and to get what three is about. It's just a nice sequential order to watch and, you know, binge on if you can. So we're going to get through these hats. These are my early day hats of college, early college day hats, I guess. And these hats are the last few hats until I got into lids. So I was practically in the dark before I saw the light of lids. Aww. Anyways, so I these are the last hats that I would buy not from lids. And then finally get into a uh, kind of a hat collector in a way. But... Um, We'll get into all of that later on. And I'll start off with a little bit of a technicality after the intro. So, of course, get your notebooks, pencils, pens, whatever you need for today because it is class time. Everyone, part three is coming up. Class is in session. Okay, before I start the video, I want to make one slight correction. So, the hat I'm going to start off with the video is technically number 15, even though I ended the last video with hat number 15 of my Bears Brand 47 adjustable hat. Doing the math in my head and kind of going through the timeline, uh, I would have gotten this hat I'm going to show you first before the Bears hat, just because of where I was in my life at, life at the time. So, let me get into uh, the next hat, we'll just call it the next hat. So this hat is from my uh, first college I went to. So I would have gotten a college hat before I would have gotten a Bears hat. Started college before I started my job at Fresh Time. And in high school I had pretty bad grades. I didn't know what I wanted to do. I had an idea I wanted to do either like music teaching or uh, history teaching. Um, didn't have the best financial support in a way. Um, and then number four, I just wasn't comfortable leaving home. So I went to what I would call the Harvard of community colleges, Harper College. Well, William Rainey R. Harper College, because that's the guy we named it after. There's a big bust of him in the middle of the, the quad founded like community college system thing. So very, very great time for me. So this is a uh, nice Harper college hat. Yeah, this is college. Um, kind of a simple uh, design in the front. I think that's what it was available at the time or it was what was in my budget at the time. It's a rustic blue, as you can see. The back is like a adjustable buckle loop. The Eyelets and button are white, as well as the underbill. And there's a lot of sweat stains. The underbill got a little coffee stain on it in my car once. So it's um, pretty beat up, to be honest. It was a great two years to be here. A uh, quick 20 minute commute there. And uh, I joined student government like on the second day. Uh, I went to the jazz lab band there. I played trombone for two years. I was on the newspaper club for a semester. I wrote like a few like tech articles, but it was it was great. Nice starting off point. I knew a few people, met a lot of great people. Shout out to uh, Adam, Eric, and uh, Joe, Joe Ward. But Joe unfortunately passed a few years ago. But uh, he was he was one of the best guys you would have ever met. Got an associates there, 2015, and then I transferred out. So this is a uh, hat number 15, technically. All right, let's move on to the next one. This next hat is a Chicago sports hat. It is the first of the team for me to have. So I already have a Cubs 
Bears and Bulls hat in my collection. So the next logical team would be Blackhawks. This is my, actually this is my first New Era hat ever. It's a uh, 3930. Let me show you. Yeah, 3930, if you can see the inside. It's a stretch fitted, uh, large to extra large. And it's a little big on my head. At the time, it was fine. But after I got a few other stretch fitted 3930 hats, I realized that this was a size big for me. But it still, you know, fits on my head. It doesn't look too weird, I think. But it's still a great hat. The front has the uh, Native American guy on the side. The uh, New Era flag. Major League Hats would like this, how it matches the button on the top of red. The back has the uh, Tommy Cross C. Very big. I like that part. And then on the side, it also has the alternate logo. I think it's a little overkill with the uh, Tommy Cross C here. Just the, the large one in the back is fine because you can see most of it well enough. So you don't really need the one on the side here. Uh, I wore this... I This was my first Blackhawks hat, and the next one I got wasn't until, like, 2018, to be honest. So this one I wore a hell of a lot for all the Blackhawks games. This was my go-to hat. And then I got into, you know, 5950s and snapbacks and all that good stuff. But this one, been carrying with me for quite a long time. This is hat number 17. So let's get on to hat number 18, which is the asterisk of the collection right now. Okay, so I know you're going to give me a bit of crap for this. I understand. Hat number 18 is my Jeff Gordon adjustable hat. And I technically don't have it right now. Yep, yep, I can hear you. Well, if you count in your collection, then shouldn't you have it? Shouldn't it count if it's in your actual collection? Shouldn't it, you know, if you actually have it, shouldn't you count it? If you don't have it, you can't count it. Well, it's in the house. I know it's in the house somewhere. In this black hole that is the house, well, primarily the basement, that is the black hole. But, um, yeah, I haven't been able to find it in quite a while, but it's still counted in my collection because Jeff Gordon was my first favorite athlete. Well, actually, it's between him and Sammy Sosa, but I'll put a picture up here on the screen of what it is and what it looked like and when I wore it. I mean, for me, I'm not too big into NASCAR. I just liked it that there was another guy named Jeff out there, you know, such a cool guy. Like, hey, He's, his name's Jeff, too. My name's Jeff. No way. I, he should be my guy. He's, he's going to be my guy. Because my dad was into NASCAR. He, he liked Tony Stewart, who drove Home Depot because it was orange and it was his favorite store. I liked Jeff Gordon ever since I was young. And in 2014, that was his last season. I mean, he, his career has spanned as long as I had been alive. Uh, he was win, winning so many... Uh, he was winning so many races, so many Daytona 500s and Cup championships. It's insane. Such a great guy, too. And, or I ordered a Jeff Gordon hat off of Amazon. And currently it's no longer available, so there's no way I can replace it if I so happen to never find it again. But Jeff Gordon was very important to me. 2019, he was inducted into the NASCAR Hall of Fame. And I wish I could find my hat for that and uh, wear it for commemoration. Because it was a nice hat. It was just simple 24 on the front. Had a signature. Had a nice little like red streaks going down. It was a good hat. I just really am pissed off with myself. I can't find it. And uh, one last note. Kyle Busch didn't f deserve to win that 2014 Cup Championship. Oh, and uh, one last note, uh, Kyle Busch, if you're listening, I know you're not, but if you're listening, and to any Kyle Busch fans out there, Kyle Busch, you're a piece of shit. You mother You dip man. 
You did not have any right to be in contention for that cup championship in 2014 when you were injured for most of the season. So, Kyle Busch, go f*** yourself. All right, so let's move on to the next hat. All right, so let's move on to the next hat, which I do have with me. Okay, so as you noticed, if you haven't, I changed my bow tie. Because as I said, these are my hats from my early college days. And after Harper, I transferred out. I was picking between five colleges. Uh, U of I, which I have uh, had up there. Uh, University of Illinois, Urbana-Champaign, the big, big U of I. That was my dream school for a while. Northern Illinois, have a hat for them. UIS, should have gotten a hat when I was down there. Northeastern uh, University in Chicago and Concordia University Chicago. And I had actually applied to Concordia before in, in high school, got rejected. Uh, Northern accepted me and UIS accepted me as well. So it's kind of a funny tale when I tell people that, yeah, the school I uh, went to and I got my graduate from, my bachelor's, originally rejected me. So yeah, it's kind of a funny story, but my next hat is one of my most important hats. If you look at my hat wall here, usually this spot is reserved for that special hat. Always has been ever since I put up the hooks here. Why that spot? I don't know. I just put it up there and it's been the standard spot for that hat. But I just threw up a, a random hat. It was a Sabres hat. But this hat, one of my favorite places I've ever been at, and it is Concordia, University of Chicago. So I'm, I know I'm rambling on about this, but, um, you know, this is two and a half years that were some of the best of my life. I mean, I've been pretty young, but uh, I loved Concordia. Loved uh, the people who were there. Uh, loved just being there. I commuted all two and a half years, and it was well worth it. Being involved with student government and band and all the people I met, uh, very significant places for me. I mean, that's the place where I first ever asked out a girl. She rejected me. Second one did too. Yeah. So, pretty significant for me. But uh, it was a great place to be. And uh, my short story of why I picked Concordia was we parked, my mom and I went on a uh, tour of the college and parked by the parking garage, walked by the batting cages, walked between, um, when you're looking towards the campus, chapel on this side and the community center, like the student union on your left, walked through it, and I'm like, I'm home. This is where I want to be. It, kind of funny how it was a raining day, but this it was home for me. It felt like home. So that's why I picked Concordia. So shout out to all my cougar friends out there. Hope all is going well. And uh, this hat has uh, endured a lot. A lot of sweat stains. I tried to fix it one time and couldn't really do it. Got the cougar on the side there. They updated the logo. And it's a, uh, adjustable in the back. So uh, this is one of my top ten hats. If not top five. So this is hat number... Where are we? 19. Let's move on to the next one. So yeah, I'm kind of rambling a bit right now with the video. I want to kind of keep these videos short. But glad you're watching. So maybe next time... Next video, I'll uh, shorten it down to just four hats, like I originally intended to. Anyways, so this next hat I got while I was at Concordia during my first year. I was in a class uh, for, I think it was uh, like diversity in the class, diverse classroom setting. And there are these two girls that I had befriended uh, in a previous class. Big Packers fan, and then in uh, second semester, we had a class together and bragging about how our Bron my Broncos were going to do so much better in the playoffs than her Packers. And she's like, ah, oh, your Broncos suck. Packers are going to win the Super Bowl. And uh, there was one the first round that weekend in 20, uh, 2016 that uh, the Broncos won that first round, and the Packers didn't. They lost to the Cardinals, and uh, I had to get a hat to celebrate. This is my first Broncos hat. It's a uh, 3930 stretch fitted. This is a nicer fit. 
Oh, it's got a nice uh, navy underbell. And it was at Dick's Sporting Goods for like 20 bucks. Had eyed it up for a while and wore it to a class the next time I saw her and just kind of be like, I didn't say anything, but just wore the hat. And uh, I've been wearing the hat for a while. Wore it during the Super Bowl when they won. The Broncos won the Super Bowl 50. Fantastic game. And uh, it's my standard uh, Broncos hat. And I like to wear this hat sometimes when I'm doing carts at uh, work in the dark. You know, just to you know, see that, oh, there's someone doing carts. Huh. So this is hat number 20. And we're going to get on to the last hat for the video. 21. Alright, so last hat for this class session. I know it's been a long video, but I had a lot of talking to do. So like I said before, I'm going to try to cut it down to maybe four hats next time. Or three. We'll see. This hat is a different hat than you would expect. This hat is a, it's a nice fancy hat, you could say. And uh, I wore it to my first day of my uh, internship at the Mount Prospect Historical Society. I forget what bow tie I was wearing that day, but I wore this hat because it was fancy. And I forget what other days I've worn it. I try, I've been trying to wear it to church. But my hat number 21, which I would consider like my 1BL hat, uh, hat before lids, so 1HBL, is my gray fedora. I uh, count fedoras in my hat collection. Uh, this is, uh, I want to say I got it from Target. Pretty sure I got it from Target. So I, I mean, I don't wear it too much because I don't wear fedoras too well like some other people, but I still have it. It's still a good hat. It's still, still kept well. I mean, it matches this. I don't know why I haven't worn it to my downtown job, to be honest. It's a nice, nice hat. Nice fancy hat. Just solid, light gray. Kind of a pattern going uh, up and down little uh, diagonally, but um, just reading a bit here, large, extra large, 100% cotton, do not iron. So this counts in my collection as hat number 21. And like I said before, this counts in my hat collection, and if I haven't said this before or you haven't heard me say it enough, diversity in a hat collection is very key. I mean, for some guys, they collect just new air hats. I get it. Or they collect just 5950 hats. Okay, that's fine. That's your hat collection. It's still a hat collection. But for me, a great, a great hat collection, a fantastic hat collection is diversity in different like teams, different styles, different shapes, sizes. You know, doesn't even have to be a ball cap to be a hat. So just uh, throwing that out there that... This nice fedora counts in my hat collection, and I look pretty decent in it. Eh, about a B. So anyways, so that's going to do it for class today. Hope you can join me next time for part four, whenever that comes out. I don't know. I don't make the rules here. Oh, oh, it's my, my channel? Oh, yeah. Okay. Producer telling me. Any anyways, hope you all enjoyed today's uh, hat session, hat history, part three. Stay tuned for part four coming out soon. As always, make sure that you like the video. Subscribe if you're new to the class. Leave a comment down below which hat in this video was your favorite. Until next time, hats off to you. Class dismissed.